Hello friends, it's Dylan Young, Developer Advocate at Sitecore. Today I'm joined by Sarah Riley, a Sitecore Sales Engineer. In this video, she will be talking about a recent POV POC that she worked on, which talks about various strategies for working with a B2B use case. This video really highlights some of the advanced use cases that you can achieve with CDP and Personalize, with identifying guests, from multiple sources and then collecting and storing additional guest data extensions about the customer and their account. Once she covers how this data is structured inside CDP and Personalize, she will then walk through an advanced decision model that will use this information so that you can then use this decision model in a triggered web, full stack, web experience or experiment. If you like today's topic, please subscribe and like today's video. Also, feel free to comment and let us know of any other use cases you would like us to cover. So with that said, let's jump into Sarah's presentation. So to explain this, I'm gonna talk about a POV that I did using kind of mock uh, customer data that is for a B2B business. So it includes individuals, and then those individuals are part of a larger organization or account. So in the data that was given for this POV, it had basically kind of a customer database for individuals. So for example, this individual person is Jeffrey King. We have some details about them, like their phone number. And we also have an ID, a customer ID, um, called kind of like a DIP ID or DID. Um, and also an email for the person. We also had kind of data that was coming in from Salesforce. So in the Salesforce data, we again had their email, we had a Salesforce ID, and then we also had reference to the account that the person was part of. So they had an account ID related to the individual. And then finally, we had orders, so like historical kind of order data. And all of the orders were stored against the account. So on the account, there was a number of orders. For example, this, um, this example here is for a household compressor. So all the orders were on the account. So I'm going to run through um, a number of different things that were set up in the system to show how you can basically have both of these kind of profiles and kind of um, create segments that include data from both of them, create decision models for an individual based on account data, different things like that. So to start off with, I'm just going to talk about the uh, identity rules that were set up in the platform in order to facilitate this. So basically in the platform, everything shown here in black was kind of set up as an identity rule. So there was email, there was the DIP ID, there was Salesforce, and there was the account ID. Uh, I kind of did this just to showcase how we can use a number of different identifiers. And also then it means that we can kind of query for customers using any of these identifiers. We can use our APIs using any of these identifiers and it just makes it much easier. Uh, so just to show you that implementation, first of all, to start off with, here's the identity rules. You can see here all those rules you just saw there in this diagram. Um, as you've seen from the diagram, the first three of these are used for an individual, and this last one is used for an organization. So you wouldn't really have any overlap here. Either, either there's a profile that has an account ID or a profile that has one or all of these other IDs. So we can, by the way, have profiles that have, for example, just a Salesforce ID or just an email, for example. Uh, that can happen but um, you'll never have overlap where someone has an account ID and an email, for example. The account ID is on organizations and the email is only on individuals. Uh, so let's take a look then at some of the uh, customer data that's on these profiles. So if I click on uh, guests here, what I can see here is there's some guests that have the DIP ID and the email. There's some guests that just have email. There's some guests that have here this Salesforce. That's what the Salesforce ID looks like, um, et cetera. So you can see here some different uh, types of accounts that are in here. Um, so these accounts will include individual accounts and also it will include um, uh, profiles that are at the account level. Uh, so organizations with an account ID and then also individuals. So let's have a look at this first one here. So let's have a look here at this profile here. So this one is for um, Jeffrey King. Okay, we can see here some information about Jeffrey here in the profile. We can't see all the identifiers that are being used for Jeffrey. Um, 
which is unfortunate they're not here in the UI. So just to show you where these are situated, you can see these here if I go into debug mode and look at the actual profile. So I can see here, for example, for Jeffrey, I have a Salesforce ID, I have an email, and I have a DIP ID as well. If I go for Jeffrey, I can see an, an, an amount of additional data here as well. So for example here, I can see an account ID associated with it. So this is the way in which I'm able to go from an individual to an account. This is where the individual is actually referencing the accounts that they are part of. And I can also see a number of other information here. For example, the department that Jeffrey's in, the authority that Jeffrey has, the profile type here is for an individual, not for an account, for example. So I can also take this account ID and I can, for example, now search for this account. So I can see the details on the account that Jeffrey's part of. So I can just search here using the account ID. And here I can see the account that relates to it. I can go into properties. And again, I can have a look here into the data extensions. And I can see here this information about the account. The profile type that I've set up in this case is account. So you can see here how I can use profile type to understand if it's an individual. Another thing here to mention is that the individuals are referencing accounts, but I didn't cross reference. I didn't do the reference back then to the individuals, the other direction. So the way that you could do that in the setup that I've done. So one option is you could obviously add that as a data extension where you're actually referencing back to the people that are part of it. But instead, what you can also do is you can also just do that by running kind of a little query by using, say, a segment. So I'm going to run here a little query to find all the people that are part of um, this account using a little segment here. So I can go here, for example, into guest and into customer, and I'm going to use this data extension, again, that we saw against the profile in EXT called account ID. So I'm going to select this here, and I'm going to put in my account ID. And then I'm just going to calculate audience here. So now I'm pulling back all the individuals that are part of this account. So every individual has a data extension that is called account ID on the individual to pull back all the individuals that are part of this account. So there's 14 people that are in this account. So maybe we want to drill down a little bit further here. So maybe we can use that authority field that I was showing earlier. So this authority field has come in from Salesforce. And I can see here all the possible values that I can have here for the authority. So let's say I want to look at all the people who are uh, decision makers or main decision makers. And let's rerun my query here. So now I'm looking for all the people, the individuals that are part of this account that have this kind of authority. So this just shows how, for example, I can run a quick search to find a particular person that I'm looking for. And I can hone in closer and closer on my segment here. So I found here one person who's a decision maker. So let's have a look at this person. Okay, so I can go into the properties here and I can see this is uh, Nicholas and I can go into his extensions. And here I'll see that, yeah, he's part of this account. He is a decision maker. He's in the purchasing department. His function is manager. He's, an, he's not an inactive contact. And again, his profile type is individual. He is an individual and he is part of this account. Um, so let's just, before I dive in a bit more to segmentation, I'm just going to go back to this account just to show you as well the orders on this account. So I go down here, I can see all the orders. So I mentioned initially in that diagram that the orders are on the account. So here's where I can find all the orders associated with this account, for example. So the individuals don't have orders. The orders are actually being made at the account level. So I can see them all here. And later on, I'll go into details on this segmentation. Okay, so this is just an example of how I can run a quick query. I also have a number of examples here of where we're pulling back, um, you know, account profiles or where we're pulling back um, individual profiles. So this is an example of individuals. So, so here, this is very similar to the query I just made. I'm pulling back all of the people who are decision makers or main decision makers. So this is a query I could have that's just looking at individuals. Uh, here's an example of a query that's just looking at accounts. So here the query relates to orders. So all my orders are on accounts. So I know this query is only going to pull back accounts. Now, how do I do a query that does both things? For example, finds um, all the individuals that have, I don't know, a lot of orders. That There's a lot of orders on that account. So here is an example of that. So these are all the individuals that are part of an account 
that is of high value, let's say value in this case was just um, all the people who've done orders where the orders have more than 50 things. Okay, so to start off here on like the kind of innermost part of this query, and by the way, just to mention, these queries get quite complicated when what we're doing is we're um, going, we're taking uh, account and individual data all at once. So we have to use SQL to do this. But this is basically what that kind of SQL would look like. And there's a lot, big part of this that would be reusable. I'll highlight that as well. Um, so to start off with, you can see here that what we're doing is we are getting the, um, the number of things um, that are in each order. Okay, so the number of uh, order items in every order. Then what we're doing is we're getting all the um, all the guests, for example, all the guest refs, where um, the number of orders is more than fifty. Then what we're doing is we're pulling back that's on that account. So all the orders are on the account. So at this point, what we're going to have is we're going to have an account ID being returned from this query. So that's what's happening here. I'm pulling out from the identifiers collection, the account ID. Then what I'm doing is I am saying basically here, I'm saying, okay, now what I want to do is I actually want to uh, pull out all of those account IDs. This is me just pulling out the account ID from the identifiers collection. I'm using here some uh, JSON parsing and things like that because the way the actual identifiers is stored is stored as a JSON object. So that's the way in which I have to do this. I'll actually show you the table in a minute to explain what I'm talking about to show this. And um, then what I'm doing is when I pull back all those account IDs, I'm basically looking for all the people who have a data extension account ID. And I'm looking for um, people who have an account ID that's in this list. So what this will do is going to look for all the people who are part of an account where the account has orders with more than 50 things in it. Okay, so you can see here how we're, we're making a query that goes um, across both things. And what we can have here as well is we can have a segment that includes um, both information from the orders uh, or the account and information from the individual as well. So here's 4,000 people basically that make up this particular um, segment. So I can have a look at those people as well. Uh, so just to explain this while I'm talking about it a bit further, I'm just going to um, open all this information is stored just to show you why I've designed that um, statement like that. So just to show you, this is the database where all the information from that particular uh, tenant is stored. So I'm just going to pull back here the guest table just to show you what it looks like to kind of explain a bit better what I'm doing in that query. And um, so just to show you, here's some example of the data that's in here. So um, guest data such as identifiers is being stored here in this BXT column, which kind of stands for a box ever extension, which is kind of a historical thing. Um, but this basically means an extent, it's kind of like a core field. It's an extension that's kind of core to the platform. And this is where the um, identifiers collection is. So that's the reason there that my query is kind of doing some um, manipulation there with the JSON person has a, an identifiers email, identifiers Salesforce ID, and identifier DIP. Okay, so they have all those different identifiers. And just to show you over here as well, Oops, this is where all the um, data extensions that are actual data extensions are stored. So here, for example, we can see all the data extensions. And they go into this column when the name of the data extension is EXT. So that's the reason as well segmentation is looking at this field. So if you don't set up your data extension as EXT, it's not going to be pulled in for segmentation. Okay, so just to show you that's the reason for that also. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about with the um, B2B is how we build decision models, okay, that use data from both. So I just showed how we build a segment that use data from both accounts and individuals. Here's an example of how we have a decision model that's using information um, from both individuals and an account. So this is the bit that I really want to focus on, but just to say uh, session data from an individual here, this is what we're doing. We're getting session data for an individual. What we're doing with this side here is we are pulling out um, data related to the account using the account ID, which is a data extension. Okay, so we're going to test this here for uh, Jeffrey King. 
So it's failing for Jeffrey because we don't have any session data, but we're interested anyway in this account data part. I'm just going to focus on that. So we can see here we're pulling back the account ID from the data extension against Jeffrey storing the account ID. That account ID is being passed into this data system and the data system is basically returning all the information about the account. Like for example, all the orders, all the segment memberships, all the data extensions against the account. Uh, like here, for example, the company name, et cetera, et cetera. So then we can use that basically. Those orders are then being passed in here to work out um, to make a decision on what and So here we can see how we're using session data from the individual and account data and order data from the account, for example. So just to show as well how this um, data system works, it's taking in this account ID. And if we just go over and test the connection, we'll have a look at how the connection works. So the connection you'll see here is actually using a full stack interactive experience. So a full stack interactive experience is basically just an endpoint. So we can also use one of these as a data system here. It's just like any other REST API. And here, if I test this, I can pass in my account ID, run the test, and back here it's returning all my guest data, okay? If we want to have a look at this full stack interactive experience, this is what it looks like. It's very, very simple. If I go in here and view the code, it's just returning the guest. So basically, the way this works is for a particular account, like we pass in a, an account ID here, like what it's going to do is it's going to pull back all the data for that particular account. So it's going to return with the full data for the account. So very, very simple. So what's happening then in our decision model is we're pulling out the account ID from the individual profile and we are passing that into this full stack interactive experience, which is pulling back all the data on that account. So this is how this well, that concludes today's presentation. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't done so already. This will allow you to get notifications of any future great content that we're releasing on this channel. So with that said, hope you enjoyed today's content and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Bye.